I'm Stacy, and welcome to my YouTube channel. And today we're going to be getting audio off my FPGA and onto my PC through Ethernet and doing a bit of signal processing along the way. So a couple of videos ago, I did an Ethernet frame and in my last video, I improved it. And today we're going to be sending audio over the Ethernet instead of just a counter, which was what I did before. So in order to get my audio, I'm going to be using the microphone that is on my Digilent Nexus board. It's a PDM microphone. If we head over to the Digilent Nexus reference manual, we can see the pulse density modulation. So you can see here, if the pulses are close together, then it's a high amplitude signal. And if the pulses are far apart, it's a low amplitude signal. The data is just a single bit. And then it also has a clock input, which is the clock frequency to the microphone. And then it has a left, right, left select, which is the left channel or the right channel. And so I have a, PDM clock generator and basically what it does is it's generating a 2.4 megahertz clock that is the PDM frequency that will be used for my microphone and that is the sample rate for this microphone I think there's a range between 1 and 3 megahertz and 2.4 happens to be a nice number if we take a look at this clock generator the divide frequency is the input frequency which is 50 megahertz divided by the output frequency, which is 2.4 megahertz. And so I'm dividing it down quite a lot. If this frequency was above five megahertz, I would be using the clock wizard. And the reason why I would use a clock wizard for higher frequencies is because the FPGA has got dedicated clock circuitry specifically for clocks. And it helps the clocks get to where they need to be as fast as they can. When it comes to slower clock frequencies below five megahertz, you don't need necessarily to use the clock infrastructure because the clocks are so slow. And in this case, what I'm doing, because this is a slower frequency clock, it's 2.4 megahertz, I'm going to be creating a pulse that occurs every 2.4 megahertz. And this pulse is in the 50 megahertz clock domain. And I will use that as the rising edge for my logic and as a trigger for my logic. I don't necessarily need to have it as a clock because it's such a slow signal. I am, however, creating a clock that oscillates with a 50% duty cycle for the pin that will be driven off the chip to the PDM microphone. And that will use the clock that is the 2.4 megahertz clock that I'm generating here. And so all of this does is it's just a little clock divider where it works out how many times my faster clock fits into my slow clock. And it does half of those and then changes the clock to high and then does half and then changes it to low again. And that's what this is. So if we head back to my PDM generator, so here's my clock generator in the scheme of things. I register my data into the 50 megahertz clock domain. When you bring in a data signal that is from off the board and you want to use it within a specific clock domain, like in this case, I have a 50 meg clock domain, I need to register it a couple of times. And what that does is it makes sure that the transitions are clean on the clock edge. So that just brings it into the clock domain. So then after my clock generator, I use a CIC filter to filter my data. If we head over to the reference manual, we can see that what they recommend is to use a counter where you count the number of samples over a specific time period, and that becomes your new value. And then you have another counter that counts another section of samples. That's your next sample value, and they overlap. So it can be done this way, but a nicer way of doing it is to have a whole bunch of counters where every counter is offset by one. So the one counter counts from sample 1 to sample 128. The next sample counter counts from sample 2 to 129, 3 to 130, and so on. And this is a moving average. And the nice thing about this is that a CIC compiler is a really fancy moving average. And instead of coding that, we can just use the CIC compiler. So DSP related has a really nice document about a CIC compiler. If you want to know more about them, I'm just going to quickly highlight a couple of things. So this is the moving averager that is basically you sum all their numbers and you divide it by however many numbers you have. So by rearranging the moving averager around, you can optimize it for implementation on the FPGA. And this is what a CIC compiler does. The parts of the moving averager get 
moved around and they also get cascaded so you could have multiple moving averages in stages and that's what this does it basically in this case you have three stages of rearranged moving average in a, in a very very kind of brief summary of what a CIC compiler is and this is the frequency response for it and it basically just filters out the frequencies around the ones that we want so that all of those other frequencies are excluded and we just get what we want and so I'm going to be using this today created my CIC compiler by going to the IP catalog and looking under filters and there's the CIC compiler and basically what we do is we choose decimation so we choose five stages and we are decimating by 64. And then I put in my initial sample rate, which is 2.4 megahertz. And I put in my clock frequency, which is 50 megahertz. The input data width is two bits. And then the output data width is 32 bits, which is the data that's gonna go into my ethernet. And that's everything. I can see the frequency response of my CIC compiler here. So this is my frequency response. Because we're decimating by 64, we're only interested in this region here. And all of this other stuff is gonna get folded in to the noise floor of this section here. So when you, when you decimate, the entire spectrum's noise floor gets folded up into your spectrum of interest. And that's why it's really important to filter before you do that, which is why we're using the CIC. I'm going to create that. And there is the instance. And I have to pad my input data with zeros because the CIC requires an 8-bit input. It's an AXI stream interface. And the AXI stream minimum is 8 bits. This rising edge pulse from my clock generator is going to be my valid. And I don't have a ready because the CIC is set up for the clock frequency that my clock generator is using. So it won't have any problems there. I'm hard coding the channel to be zero and my output ports are the CIC output microphone and data valid. And so if I take a look at my top level of my ethernet now, I have some microphone inputs and outputs. And instead of my counter, which is what I have before, I have my PDM microphone module here with the microphone data and valid, which is over there. I still have a little counter here because I need to delimit my audio into packets. And so this packets timer now just keeps track of when the last signal is. So that as my audio samples are coming along, I can count out 128 samples and put a last signal there. I also have an endian switch on the data because the FPGA is the opposite endianness from the PC. And from here on, it's exactly the same as my previous video with the Ethernet generator, except I am using my audio data instead of my counting data, which is what I did last week. So let's test it. There we go. Okay, so. For my test bench, I'm just using a linear feedback shift register to create a whole bunch of random pulses. And we can see here that the CIC is filtering this input data signal and it is producing a new sample that's 32 bit long every 64 clock cycles of the microphone clock. And then that is just going off the FPGA. So it's a really, really simple simulation to deal with today. And I'm gonna run it in the hardware. I'm going to head over to my hardware manager and plug in my FPGA. There we go. So now it's all programmed and I'm going to open Wireshark to take a look at these packets. And we can see now that my packets are coming through and they are, it should be 300 packets a second. Yep, 300 packets a second. 333 it should be packets a second and we can see now that this data is populated with audio well it's po populated with audio samples so in order to check that these samples work let's record something i have modified my python code to process these new audio samples and i'm saving the raw binary data to file just like i was previously except that when i open the file I now mm, subtract the DC offset, which is that line. I normalize it, which is that line. And I scale it to 32 bits, which is that line. And then I write it to a WAV file using the WAVE Python library. And that's this thing. And this is a test. Now I am busy recording myself using my FPGA. In fact, this is being recorded on my FPGA. And we will see what it sounds like in a moment. There it is. So now we're done.
So now I head over to my output.wave, which has been produced over here. Now open it with Audacity and we see what it looks like. And I can hit play. In fact, this is being recorded and there's me. on my FPGA. And so this is how I can take audio from my FPGA and put it on my PC. So this was a lot of fun and I hope that this was helpful to you. If you would like me to go over the CIC in more detail, I can do that. I was debating whether I was going to go into a bit more detail here today, but I thought that the video would be long enough as it is. And that was a bit of a detour that would be for another video. The Vivado licensing does have a CIC generator, but I don't know if Quartus does. So if you are using Quartus, you might have to code your own. It's quite a fun thing to do to code your own CIC. It's a nice exercise for someone that's more intermediate if you want to do that yourself, if you're up for the challenge. So I might also go over something like that in a future video as well. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, as, as usual, all of this code is in GitHub and I will see you again next time. Bye! Thank you.